Hey folks, a little update on the Cord King. Just walking out to it, I'll switch the camera. Hey, I wonder if I can do that well. Oh, <laughs> look at that, couldn't do that before. So, I just sold this. People were out here uh, a couple hours ago and they brought their own logs. Uh, a couple of the most crooked, awful pieces you've ever seen. Um, just stuff we could carry on, just because Nothing works in the winter time, man. Uh, everything's too slippery. I got a lot of grades here on my property and it's hard to, to move about. And I left my grapple buckets out, so it'd be hard to connect the hydraulics. Uh, even though it's a mild day, I think it's about zero degrees, but nothing works. <laughs> but anyway, I did. Uh, I was able to pull the machine out yesterday in anticipation of them coming out. Had it over there and it was not easy to do. Uh, the little grade you can see there with the Avant and the turf tires uh, was kind of miserable. But anyway, long story short, as far as reviews go, now I'll say this enough, I'll say it every time if I have to. People seem to absolutely hate when I'm critical of companies, people, and machinery. But here's the thing about it. I'm just being honest. Um, I'm just a regular customer. I'm not going to lie to my subscribers uh, because company X lent me this machine or gave me 10% off or gave me 15% off and I'm, my whole purpose is to promote them. My purpose is uh, to pro promote myself, my channel, and to help people benefit from the experience that I have and nowadays that's almost all negative it's it's nowadays prices are, are way higher than they should be quality is low and I'm selling this for a reason uh, honestly part of the reason is because I have cancer and I'm going for surgery in February and I'm gonna be off my feet for a long time till summer for sure so this is going to be sitting around and I just thought ah you know what <sighs> I'd rather just uh, not have it sitting around and if things go pear-shaped I die or something I don't want other people to have to deal with selling this so but I'm not sorry to see it go it's it's an okay machine it works like it should it cuts um, it handles the logs okay way overpriced in my opinion uh, for the best of what it does and way overpriced because some of the stuff is so cheap Look how skinny those rails are you lean in on these fenders to do servicing in here and clean up and they bend just you know stickers peeling off and Fender's rusting. Ah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> even, like, it doesn't even come with that winch. You have to hand winch it. And that is not easy to do. Like, I can tell that winch is working hard. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't buy Cord King again. Um, not for the price I paid for this used. Not for the price they charge new. Um, and Cory King has a really good reputation. So if this is the best of what's out there. The bar is really, really low. Now, I haven't had any experience with uh, Easton made Bell's machine, but, um, well, I have had uh, an experience with them that was bad. Uh, there's a lot of information out there if you look in the right places. They run a forum, a group on Facebook uh, that they have a little bit of a conflict of interest on because they don't disclose that it's really a Bell's forum. Um, say anything negative about them and Jeremy Bell goes and blocks you, which he did to me. So basically, I've come across quite a few people with splitters and stuff that they break and then they have to fight tooth and nail to get warranty work and company always bell blames user error and and uh, those machines are more money than these 
And I get customers are going to do stupid shit and they're going to try and rip you off, but for the amount of money they're charging, I think they got to take it. But anyway, uh, I wouldn't buy another Court King. I'm not going to buy a Bells or Easton made uh, processor or splitter. Uh, funny thing, the person that bought this used to be a neighbor here before I moved here. And um, they had a Halverson like I had. And I heard about their experience with the Halverson because they bought it from the same dealership that I trying to deal with here, Green Valley Kubota. And uh, Green Valley Kubota warned me about the Halverson. But I got the bigger model and it just didn't work out for me. So it's kind of funny that uh, I ran into the same people. Uh, there's a company in Quebec, Caltech. That seems to make a good processor. Just one guy working on his own. Uh, about the same price, but I'd say the quality is better. And it's just a smarter. He's willing to change things and customize. And he comes with a, a crane grapple on it so you can self load. I might give that a go, but uh, what I'm going to do is because I have this wicked splitter coming that uh, was going to be ready for me at the end of January and I sort of told them that I won't be able to take it then because I'm having the surgery and I'm not going to be mobile. So I told them that and they said, okay, they'll put it off and let me know, let them know when I'm ready. So I got this uh, wicked splitter coming up with two stations, lifts and a conveyor in the middle. Uh, in the States it's called a power split, I can't think, timber double is what the Canadian company is called. Uh, I got that coming. And I was thinking I'm going to get my welder fabrication shop here to build me something like the Halverson that will attach to this kid's tier because it was good at handling logs, picking them up. And it was good at uh, blocking them, cutting them. But it was poor at measuring them and advancing them and really poor at splitting logs. So... I'm going to have him build me the same thing as the Hoverson without the splitter. And I think uh, with my Avant, that custom machine that he's going to build to uh, pick up and block the logs and the splitter I have coming, I think I'll be set up uh, pretty good. I think really as good as anybody would be set up with uh, the processor like I just showed you because... The other thing that surprised me about it is the amount of time it takes to load. Um, my wife helps me a lot and she can run the machine, but she runs a little bit slower than I do. And uh, I like running the machine and then I'd have to stop and load the logs. And uh, I'm just actually surprised how long it takes to load. That's why I was considering the Caltech with the self-loading grapple arm or seeing I'm using the Avant anyway to load if I can uh, to handle the logs. If I can pick them up and cut them without having to leave the machine and then place them by where the splitter is going to be, somebody else can just pick up the blocks and split them through and then put them on the conveyor and pile them up. But hopefully I'll have that set up next summer. So, as I say, end of the day about the Cord King. Selling it for a reason. Happy, happy to see it go. And... Uh, you know what, I had it for, I only put like 60 hours on it, maybe 40 or 60 hours. I think I only had it for about six months and I'm making 2,500 bucks on it. So, I, and I'm pretty sure if I held on to it until the spring, I'd make more, but eh, it doesn't matter. Happy to see it go and I'm happy I didn't lose any money on it. Thanks for watching folks. Here's another thing I don't Cheers. like about the Court King. They got the wind-up jack there, and then this one here. They should have a wind-up jack on each corner, including the back. Like, they have that one there, the set adjustments, and then this one. So they got two preset adjustments and two that are fully adjustable, and all four should be fully adjustable, because that is bullshit. That's just cheap. What did that save them? Like, 20 bucks? And final thought, not a personal attack. Salesman of Cord King Surge, really nice guy. Always attentive, always making time. I'm sure he's extremely busy. Apparently, 
everybody in the business is like just picking money up off the sidewalk. As soon as he found out I bought a used machine, ghosted. It was like I didn't exist and I wasn't a Cord King customer. <laughs> and uh, you know what? I get it. He's in it for himself. He's in it for Cord King. And, uh, you know, it's a choice, I guess. Uh, there's a price to pay for that kind of selfishness. And and that price is uh, just letting people know what to expect. Pre-sale, good. Post-sale, Eh, sucker. And there she goes. Better shape than when I bought it. When I bought it, the trailer brakes weren't working. I was towing it with a half ton. Didn't have any lights. And then, uh... I didn't make it all the way home because my Chevy Silverado said I had 50 kilometers of gas left and I ran out of gas on the highway and then waited three hours to get gas <laughs> all right friends <clears throat> thanks for tuning in another episode of uh, drilling and tapping out broken bolts that is the, I don't know, billionth time I've done this job. Bolt breaks off, I gotta drill it out. Get a, it's not a tap, but uh, you know what I'm talking about. Stick it in there, reverse the broken bolt out, place it again. How many times I've done that, I don't know. It's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, but here we are. Clear snow with this machine the other day. Uh, it was a little bit easier because the snow wasn't as wet. It was dry snow. And there is a, definitely a learning curve to this. Starting to like the uh, four-way bucket because instead of having to tip the bucket, I can just open it and it just tips or empties so quick uh, that way. So that's an advantage of that. I still don't have a snowblower. I think with a snowblower, this would be a uh, cat through a rand. <clears throat> show you what I'm doing today uh, ordered some logs the other day guy told me next week and I said okay appreciate it uh, and then this morning he sent me a message saying he's on the way I was like oh okay well I'll just change my day and I'll uh, <laughs> I'll go out and make sure you can do your job because I respect your time so much and I'm just a freaking customer after all I don't know, man. <laughs> be, be nice to have my time respected the way I respect others' time. And then I, as the customer, I don't know. I'll uh, get this done, stop yammering, and I'll go show you what I did. It was out at the field over there <clears throat> where I store my logs. Hopefully, he'll be able to drive in. Uh, it's fairly went easier than I thought because the ground is nice and frozen. But uh, I'll tell you, it's kind of rough on the machine now in the wintertime, which seems so logical, but it's rough on the machine now because the ground's frozen. So instead of the ground absorbing some of the weight, I just noticed the machine's bouncing a lot, and I don't know how it's going to do. So looking at this today, I just tried to tighten those up, and there's no tightening them up. I don't know. I'm going to have to take this off, see why that's flat loose. Uh, I got a feeling that something there is broken off on the inside. This whole thing is just stupid. This sitting, sitting on the fender or rubbing on there, is, that's just stupid. But those are my complaints for the day. Like I say, I gotta stop now. All right. So I'm going down a uh, lower part of my property using the country road instead of the trails. It's a little bit quicker. So this is what I did. I had to clear this out. This is a ditch. Uh, hope the logging truck can get in here. A little rough there. So I cleared this out quite a bit. 
over here I got my gravel buckets and I wasn't anticipating on using them this year. I did try to hook it up, but it's just too much mud frozen. The pins won't go through. So I will try and move my logs with this grapple bucket I have on here. I just want to move the logs I left over from last year and get them organized. And I think my new load, I cleared all this out, but just pushed the stop the bucket and made an area where he can turn around. And I think I'm just going to get him to put the logs over here. I got 12 truckloads ordered. So he should be alright to get in here. A little concerned about the steep ditch there, but So there's the load of logs. That's a triple load. 1100 a tandem, so that's $3,300 there. I'm impressed that he got in to that little gate because he comes off the highway, turns right, and then he's got to turn right again. I didn't think he was going to make it. I thought I was getting a tandem, one tandem. So. He needs the jackknife or something here. I've never seen this type of move before, but experienced man knows what he's doing. Yeah, there we go. So now we can reach those ones there. He was just dragging them to the middle one before. Beauty. Well, that was a bigger rig than I thought I'd be getting in here, but it all went well. The ground is kind of soft over there. See how he does here going up. Fingers crossed. No problem. All right, well, that's good.
good. Hey, Mr. Snake. Boop. Boop. Boop.